Greetings. I was doing some work here in my parlor today and I thought I would like to stop and um, catch you up a little bit on a something that I've been doing with my bullet journal. If you were part of following part of um, Jessica Starr and some of her followers at the beginning of this year, um, we've been working on keeping track of our lives, a lot of our mundane lives and our witchy lives as well in one book, in a bullet journal style. So I've been incorporating my daily schedules and duties and things for my mundane life, for my um, uh, fa family life, for my hobbies, all my hobbies, all my scheduling, all my... Um, appointments and things. Also my journaling. I'm taking keeping track of tarot and some of my witches, witchy practice as well in this little book. And as you can see, I'm really more than halfway through already. <laughs> um, I did share a video on this, how I set my book up if you're interested, but um, that's not what this is really about. What this video is going to be about, it's a short video. I just wanted to say it is a fantastic experience I've been having I've had a lot of insight just in two months' time about my life. <laughs> so I would like to share that with you. The one thing I want to share first is um, we put these, I've, I follow Jessica's suggestion, and at the beginning of the journal, I have a daily draw tracker. I've been tracking one card a day from a deck, and the idea was she changes decks every month. And I had some new decks that I was going to do. I thought I would start out January with the Deviant Moon. Thank you, Simon, for getting me hooked on this deck because I'm really hooked on the deck, which I found really kind of repulsive when I first got it. But I'm so in love with this deck now. I, I gotta, I gotta, I don't know. <laughs> it's just really hitting me in the place. Hitting me in the place. But anyway. I've been keeping track of my daily draws, and I did it for the whole month of January. And um, by Jessica's suggestion, I looked at the pattern in my tracker. I'm not sure if you can see this; it might be a glare on the page. But there's a here's my tracker, the cards that I got, and the ones that are white with Roman numerals. If you can see that at all, is um, those are major arcana cards. And out of the month of January, I drew. I believe over 20 major arcana cards. It was my intention to approach this deck because the deck is, a little, is in shadow. To me, it's in shadow, I think. It's in shadow to everybody. Um, I wanted to do some shadow work, and I thought this deck would really be good for that. So, But all of these major arcana cards were just hitting me in the face, hitting me, hitting me. And I, in Jessica Starr's words... Well, isn't that interesting, she says, when she sees patterns of um, uh, what's going on in my life. And I have felt these great surges. The whole month of January, I really felt slammed by all kinds of feelings, all kinds of, of um, a lot of things, major things were happening in my life too. But this just reiterated all of that. It just, you know, um, I just, and I would, and I was journaling a lot about things, you know, what is going on, um, and a lot of, you know, <laughs> a lot of writing in this little book, a lot of writing in the book, you know, all kinds of, you know, what in the world is going on in my life? What's going on in here? Um, and I had to say, at the end of January, I decided I was going away for the weekend, the first weekend of February, I was going to retreat. Joshua Tree here in California with a, a, uh, a group of witches um, to celebrate. Um, and we went to this place called Joshua Tree. I might have mentioned it before, but I want to say um, it's a very interesting park because this is a park in the high desert here in California. Uh, oh, well, it's near Palm Springs, I think. Where is it? Oh no, Palm Springs. Um, and I had just come across a spread I had done for a friend of mine 
I, and I and I talked about this spread in my tarot series if you were watching, but it's called the pentagram spread, and um, I had done it and I had done it for a friend of mine, um, for reading for her using the Druid Plant Oracle, one of my other new decks, and the spread was found within that book, and um, so I took the cards it's with me to Joshua Tree, and I did myself for the first week of February my own um, reading. You following that spread, I have it in here. Um, I'm very, I was doing so many things today, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but anyway, um, which is just talking about my relationship. It's looking for wholeness, healing, integration, spiritual development. And I did talk a little bit about that. Um, On my, like I said on the tarot video. So, oh, here it is. It's right in my front of my face. I'm turning pages before, turning pages afterwards. And I had done it and I mentioned this little spread um, to you before. It's just a six card spread, but it is dealing with um, how we relate to fire, earth, air, water, and spirit. Um, and it, I, it was really interesting for me. I found it really interesting. I came home and I meant to, at that point, change to another deck. This is the point of my story. And I came home from Joshua Tree. Just, I was electric when I came home. Now, a little backstory on that. Joshua Tree is a place which has, I'm looking here because I have to read. Joshua Tree Retreat Center has 15 known vortexes on the land. Um, a vortex is a place on the planet of in, supposedly of increased energy. The energy of a vortex acts as an amplifier. An amplifier takes a signal or frequency and makes it stronger. When standing in a vortex, the energy will magnify what we bring to it on a physical, mental, emotional, or spiritual level. The energy may augment your thoughts, may augment your thoughts and intuitions, allowing you to gain an unexpected insight. It may heighten your feelings of joy and happiness or even have physical effect, such as causing a nagging pain to dissipate. The energy may also have a profound spiritual effect, leading a person to gain a greater understanding of who they are, where they are going in life, etc. Many times helping to induce an internal ecstatic experience. Okay, now as I said, it had 15 known vortexes on, this, on the land of this retreat center. And when we were there, it was, there was a lot of storms and things going on. So we had a lot of rain and really cold and wind. And so we didn't spend a lot of time venturing out of the buildings, you know, outside. But we were, I did have a few experiences where I kind of felt um, supercharged, supercharged. Wasn't sure exactly if one of them was, it could have just been an emotional experience to the retreat itself. But I was, had one experience when I was in the gift shop. And I was on one side of the gift shop, and I noticed my hands started to go. My hands started to go. And um, I couldn't, I just had this tremor, like a little shaking. And I started to feel sort of nauseous. So I was going to go outside. I walked towards where the door was to go outside. And as soon as I stepped away from that area, the shaking stopped. I, my breathing was clear. I felt good. I felt really good. So I continued to look around the shop a little bit more. I decided to go back where I was to look at what I had left. Walked back over to the counter. I started shaking again. Started to get a queasiness in my stomach. Interesting. Didn't put too much thought into it. Anyway, we had a lovely weekend. We came home. When I came home, after, oh, by the way, first of all, after I had did my reading, I somehow felt, and then I sat and looked at my um, the tracker, daily tracker for the, um, month of January, and I saw all of those major arcana cards. I couldn't help to say, to feel, what about the day-to-day -day stuff is what I really need right now. I need to come down to earth, back to earth. This big event was over. The experiences, the other experiences, I was, things that were happening to me in January were finished. I needed some direction. I needed to just look. I didn't feel like I got to know the, this deviant moon at all. Because I was just looking at the major arcana for most of it. So I made the decision to go ahead through February 
with the deviant moon, working with the deviant moon, okay? Which right away, I came home on, what did I come home on? The 3rd or the 4th, made the decision, and starting on that day, came in, I started pulling my Arcana cards. And out of the rest of the month, I only have maybe, what do I have? Three or four for the rest of the month, major arcana, the rest are minor arcana. Well, isn't that interesting, Jessica Starr would say. But they were all about kind of the same thing. All about kind of the same thing. And what they were about, which was interesting to me, are the feelings that I had going on in me already. It was like when I came home from the Savannah Joshua Tree, instead of my cards telling me what is going on in my life and what might be coming in my life, what kind of energies are going to be influencing my life, which is usually the kind of things that I ask the tarot to tell me, this time I was getting interesting things about what like happened yesterday, putting yesterday in focus for me. It was completely, and I didn't do anything but draw one card. It was something that had just happened to me or, you know, in that Everything was sort of referring to the past like an explanation. Like an explanation. And it was like I was really being pulled into shadow. I was really being pulled into shadow. Um, I don't know how to describe it any other way, but that's what I felt. My sentences were very peaked. I had a few. Um, I'm not even sure. I can't remember when I came on here or not and did a video if I told you the experiences that I've had after I came back from Joshua Tree. But um, I will tell you quickly, I had two paranormal, I would call them experiences in my house, like almost immediately, the week following, where I had, was sitting in my, first one I was sitting in my kitchen. And I have two cats that I allow going into the garage during the day. They allow, I allow them to go into the garage. It, I keep the door between the kitchen and the garage closed because we don't have heat running in our house and it makes the house cold. So. But when they decide they want to go out the garage, I open the door and let them out, close the garage, close the door again, and then they go. They patrol the garage, and they one my one of my cats, Pywak, it goes up into the attic for me all the time, make sure there's no mice up in the attic and that kind of thing. And she's really useful that way. And um, I was sitting at the, and then she usually, you know, they pound on the door when they want to come in. Well, I was sitting at the kitchen table doing something. And I heard the pounding, pounding, pounding on the door. And I thought, oh, Pi Wack, it wants in. And I turned to the door. And just before I stood up, I turned and looked at the door. And as I looked at it, I saw the doorknob very slowly and very smoothly turning. And I say very smoothly because that door is a door that is old. The doorknob thing's oiled. It sticks. It doesn't open smoothly. You couldn't sneak out there in the garage. You bang. It bangs out. But it opened very, the door knob very smoothly. It opened, the door opened slowly about this far. In comes Goose. In comes Pie Wacket. And as Pie Wacket cleared the door, she turned around and looked towards the door, looked toward, back towards the garage for a second, paused for a second, and continued walking. My first impression was my husband must have oiled the door. And my husband must be out in the garage. And I called to him, and I called to him, and I realized he was at the other end of the house. It was not him. He had not opened the door. I don't know how the door opened. The cats, we could say, opened the door. I don't know how they managed to turn the knob. They're not that smart. <laughs> and that doorknob really is it's a stiff doorknob. So, <laughs> think what you may. Another... Maybe two days later, I was in the, now this is personal, and if you're shy or, or if you're, you know, you might, this might be a little too graphic for you, so you might want to turn away, you know, mute me for a minute, and I'll give you a signal when you can come back. I'll give you the okay when you can come back. But for those of you who are going to stay, I was in the bathroom. I was getting ready to go into the shower, so I was ready to go into the shower, and I was taking care of a little business, making sure I was taking care of a little business before I got into the shower, waiting for the water to get warm. I was on the, I was sitting down, let's just say I was sitting down, 
in the bathroom. And across from where I was sitting on the major seat in the bathroom, there's a chair in the corner right across, like just a few feet because the bathroom is really small. And um, it's an old, old chair we've had for probably 30 years. We got it at a, at a uh, antique sale or something one time. It's an old prayer chair or something. There's room in the back for books, you know, church booklets and things. And we had it because we thought it would be nice to use in the bathroom. And it has always been warped. You know, the seat on of it has always been warped, no matter what we did. You know, bent. The wood warped. But we, it's whatever. We use it to keep our clothes on. We just throw our clothes on it. I bought it for I don't know what reason, and then I didn't really use it. So I put it in the bathroom and put a little cushion on the seat, and we throw clothes on it when we're going to get in the shower. And while I was seated across... I heard a big, big, like a bang, like the dump down onto that. I don't know how to describe it. You know, if something really heavy, you put something really heavy down. Well, what it sounded like was somebody very large sat down very hard on that chair. Bang, onto the chair. It sounded exactly like it was from the chair. And I wasn't t touching the chair in any way. And I looked at the chair, and I hesitated for a moment and then I picked the cushion up and looked on the chair. The chair was perfectly straight. <laughs> the seat was perfectly straight. It was like somebody really heavy and big sat down hard on the chair which fixed the chair. Now I kind of felt at that point that some things maybe had come home with me. <laughs> I wasn't sure. I really wasn't sure. But something was pulling me really deep into shadow and I don't mean deep into shadow in a bad way, where it, but things that I needed to work on. Every time I started to, in my day-to-day -day life, in that month, deviate away from what, I, what my subject matter was, something would come and pull me back. And that's the only thing I could say to explain it. I don't know what else it was, but something would come and pull me back. And it was like, remember yesterday? Remember yesterday? Remember what we've learned so far? And you haven't done that. You need to do it. Yesterday is telling, reminding you, you need to do it. And that's what has been happening with me all of January, all of February. I don't know even how to explain it. I really don't know how to explain it. But when I got the end of February, I decided, okay, I'm going to go on to another I'm going to go on to another deck. I have to go on. i got to get going on the year, get out of the shadow for a while. And before I left, I thought, well, you know, I've only been doing the Deviant Moon a card at a time. So I decided in the back of the book, within here, there's a little white book, and in the back of the book is called, there's a spread, and they're called doo -doo -doo -doo, the Deviant Moon Tarot. I have copied it into my book here. And it's just 10 cards, starting here, going Wittershins, going counterclockwise around in the circle. And if you have the deck, you can look on the book and see. But what it is, it is, my interpretation is, it's just called the lunatic spread. It's, this is what the, this, the description of the spread is. The deviant moon shines its influence across the land, affecting one's mind, huh, dreams, and destiny with her silvery glow. Boy, does it ever. The lunatic spread mimics the shape of the full moon and derives energy from a circular pattern. Okay. Now, it has cards representing um, all circumstances in your present position in life and then going to the past, things that have shaped this present time, going through your dreams and subconscious thoughts, also into your hopes and dreams you haven't realized, things that unseen powers that, in, that affect the Inquirer, future happenings in the destiny of the Inquirer, elements of any type you find yourself in, home, work, community. How those who meet or deal with, or you deal, you meet or deal with affect your persona, how, how they affect what you show them. The effect of spiritual influence over your questions and the culmination of events, okay? And now, I looked to find my questions. I thought, you know, and I don't usually do this either. 
I have said this in the past, I usually, when I read for myself, don't ask a specific question. I let the cards tell me what they want to tell me. That's what I did with the Deviant Moon for the, for the two months. And I thought for this spread, I'm going to ask specific questions. And what I asked, I looked, did a little bit of, of research on the internet. I'm sorry I can't remember to give people credit where the questions came from, but they're kind of general questions. Because um, I looked in several different websites and they were, seemed to be really similar. So I'm not sure who started, who started what. But anyway, I wanted to know what I was not seeing. What am I, what am I hiding from myself? Because I keep repeating the same thing over and over again. This is very clear to me from my daily draws. This was very clear to me um, from my things that were happening to me. It was almost at some point like I was experiencing Groundhog's Day if you ever saw the movie. What qualities am I projecting onto others and how do I move forward? How do I move forward from here? That's what I was looking at. And I got some interesting, really interesting, interesting um, answers. Things I already knew. Things I already knew. And that's what the the moon shows us, right? The moon is showing us what we know already, but it is reminding us the mem the, that our memories are mirrors. That's what the moon reminds us all the time. Our memories are mirrors. We need to look at the past and see that tells you why we are what we are. And that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what has happened to me. So much that I was always, all we, what was happening to explain it to you? I make a big deal out of it because it was a really big deal to me. I don't normally do this, but if I can find the card. This is the kind of thing that happened to me all month long when I was talking about the um, the GV Moon. When I was talking about everything that happened to me when I would pull a card. Um, it would <coughs> excuse me. It was like the card was saying, what did I just, you know, I pull a card. It was like, what did I just say to you? Why do I have to tell you again? There would be the card, you know. You know very well. You know very well what's going on today because you're the one that is created today. It was saying those kind of things to me all month. Um, I'm trying to hurry with this because this was the one that really knocked me down. And this happened early in the month. And it just got greater from there. I'm having trouble finding the card. Um, isn't that typical? When I go to find something, I can't find it. But it's, I think it's kind of, it's kind of interesting. I think you might find it interesting. Who knows? Who knows? I know, I think I bored people to tears with my 31 Days of Tarot because I know a lot of you do not read tarot and you must have thought, oh, is she ever going to talk about anything else? <laughs> that was like maybe the last, uh, ah, here it is. What is it? Yes, the Five of, the five of Cups. I had a, <laughs> my husband and I had a, well, I was going to say my husband had an argument, but my husband and I didn't really have the argument. I had the argument. He was really irritating me one day morning. He just was irritating. You know how husbands can be irritating. Like wives can be irritating. But it's just a husband and wife thing. And somebody who's been around for a lot of times. And, and I'm just like ripping into this man. I was really mad at him. And he was going to leave to go somewhere for an errand. And when he left, I'm like, oh, man, you know. Pissy, pissy. I was really pissed. <laughs> I shovel the car, I shovel the car, I shovel the car. Look what I pull. I hope you can see that. I hope you can see it. It's a five of, five of cups. And the, and the uh, description of the five of cups is the wretched shrew. The wretched shrew we raise her husband over three spilled cups, the contents of which empty slowly onto the floor. A rose lies in remembrance of the romance that once flourished here. Two cups still stand right, upright, for in spite of the wall that has come between man and wife, some hope for love still remains. 
Well, yes, there's love that still remains. I can tell you there's no worry. But it's like I was... Whatever came into my mind came out of the deck at me. It was freaking me out. It was freaking me out. So, the DV Moon is going away just for the month. Well, not for the month. It's going away after two months of a really nice sojourn that we had together. But I have to say, I was really anxious to um, try another... Am I the only person who keeps these things? Why do I keep these? You know, these things in the box? I think some people call this the art card. Okay, that's fine. I, I, but what is this? This is just an ad for the book. I'm not going to buy the book. And if I do, I'm not going to buy it because of the card. You know, because I don't even look at this card. But it's in the box when the box comes. So I feel like I want to put it back and keep keep it and I have no reason at all to keep it it's just so silly anyway this box is not gonna survive me okay so <laughs> I have left the deviant moon because I have found out that I am a paradox. This is what happened in my reading. I found exactly what's going on. I found that, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you my personal business, but I'm desperate for change. Don't like change. So the otters keep coming up over and over and over again, which caused me a lot of distress. And a lot of the times I blame other people for being the triggers of my disappointments. Uh, but I know other people are not the cause of my unhappiness. My reaction to their actions are the cause of my anatomy, as I know that. And it tells me about to go forward, how I need to go forward. It was a lovely, really lovely reading. It was so clear. Um, and I, sh I looked back again at my reading for over on the chart, you know, on my journaling in here. And I noticed in January of the 5th, no, in January, at the beginning, the January... What can I talk? I don't know. In January, the Five of Pentacles was my advice. It was my card of the month, and it advised me to find sanctuary to work out the stresses in my life. That's exactly what I did. I sort of locked myself away. I didn't do a lot of things. I stayed home. I was doing a lot of sewing, 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 um, working, working, working. You know. Um, and then February, when I came to February, my card of the month was the Knight of Wands, and that reminded me that I'm on the way. There could be there could be bumps in the road, but there's going to be some change. And and it started, my card started to, it exactly told me, exactly told me what the cards of the month were telling me. I, it was a wonderful experience. So if you are a, um, the, the point of my story is, if you are a tarot reader, and if you do not journal, which I can understand that journaling takes a long time, I really advise you to at least keep track of something like daily draws and see how that parallels with your life. I wrote a lot about it um, in my tarot journal. In my tarot journal, I wrote, you know, maybe six or eight pages about the spread that I did, the lunatic spread, and the answers that I got from it. And it was so helpful. I can't tell you how helpful it was. And what's interesting now is I've moved along to the Nicoletta Ciccoli Tarot, which some people find equally disturbing as they find the Deviant Moon. And I kind of maybe think I should find it disturbing, but I do not at all. I really love it because it's really something that um, it speaks to the dreams. It speaks to, to my dreams, right? Um, and as a matter of fact, that's even what my card is here. Um... My tarot card of the month, which was the Nine of Wands, um, came up again at the beginning of March, on the 4th of March. And um, again, I'm so into the wands. I keep, I've keep i been into wands for now a couple months, a lot of wands. Um, and then, of course, um, the cards that are coming out in my deal the most interesting thing i want to say now i'm starting this new cycle coming out of shadow 
I get to March 6th, which is today, and um, out of my book, when I'm making my journaling, um, my the new moon in, is in Pisces. There's a description here about the new moon in Pisces, which happened happened this morning. This morning, it's talking about dropping into the dreamy waters, letting go into the unknown depths, emerge restored and refreshed. Um, the new moon in Pisces invites you to explore your inner world through creativity, art, music, dance. Time to express yourself. Let what is hidden bubble up through color, movement, and sound. Instead of going down and trying to dig up what's in what's in shadow, I'm letting it bubble up through joy, through creativity, right? This is the time to do it in March. Um, compassion for yourself is required. Feel into the shadows of the past. Create the space for limitation to release through some kind of creative pursuit. You are the creative expression of a magical universe. You are both the artist and the canvas, the song and the dance, the writer and the story. Anyway, it continues to go on. I thought it was so interesting. <laughs> I can't, uh, where'd it go? I shouldn't have put these things away. Um, I really should not have put them away. I knew I was going to share them. I don't know why I did. Anyway, the, um, it, it felt so good. It felt so good to come into this, uh, into this place. Because I have been, you know, as much as I liked and enjoyed the, the two months with the Deviant Moon, I felt for a while stuck. I felt that I was not going to be able to move forward because I kept pushing my back. You know, it's like it's like taking one step forward and then two steps back. That's what I felt I was doing, and then two steps forward and then another step back, um, which is not productive at all, right? And but that's the way I felt, and I think we all have that kind of a feeling. Um, Anyway, people that are obsessed by this card, why can't I find it? Oh, because I'm probably looking for the wrong thing. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I don't have made enough videos lately to know what I'm doing. I'm, uh... But, you know, I don't want to ever be want somebody that's too heavily dependent on the tarot. And I don't want to give that impression that we need to just do everything the card says. Because usually I'm like, you know, trying to clear my mind. And, and I recognize, try to, and I, some, somebody might even say that to me. Um, but trying to clear my mind after I had that little tiff with my husband. I didn't stop really, stop long enough to clear my mind and to, um, before I shuffled the cards, as I was shuffling the cards. So I certainly put that energy in the cards, and I understand that. I recognize that. So, if somebody's going to somebody's going to come and um, remind me of that, well, it's not really necessary. But thank you for thinking of me. <laughs> thank you. Anyway, I can't find. Them. Anyway, the card was all about. Now I can't even find it. I'm even wondering if I brought it in with me. It might still be there. I don't see it. I don't see it. I must have left it in the other room. Or it could be right here in the box. Oh, it's right in the box. It's right in the box. My card for the day. The new moon in Pisces. This is my card for the day. The Six of Cups. And the Six of Cups. Let me see. I'm going to find a look in the book. I just want to tell you what it says. Now, that doesn't mean it's the only thing it could mean. But I, I like to look. This is a brand new deck for me. So I want to look in here and see what the author intends it to mean. Which is, remember, I've reminded you that that's always a good thing to do. Okay, we have the Six of Cups, and it's a really dreamy, and the whole, the whole deck really appeals to me because it's very dreamy, and boy, do I dream. So this is going to be a, a month of another ride 
Look into your deepest memories to remember who you are and what makes you happy. Let others help you find yourself again. You know, so looking in there, what makes me happy? Nothing makes me happier than art, music, you know, uh, creative endeavors. Um, that's my joy. So I find this deck coming on the heels of the Deviant Moon is just what the doctor ordered. <laughs> so I'm really, I'm having a really good start to um, 2018. Thank you mostly to Jessica Starr because I don't think I would have noticed quite as many things as I, if I would not have been putting them in this bullet journal. So thank you to her and thank you for watching. I'm Rebecca and I wish you blessings.